would want to suggest that this body is not the house of the soul, that this body is the soul, that the body itself is what thinks, what is speaking right now, that this material form is a magical thing. It's aware, it's sensitive. Now we're suffering in the West because we've hyperdeveloped the mental consciousness structure with its sense of selfhood, and we've lost contact with the spiritual world, and we think that there is no such thing as a spiritual world, and all the Earth is, is is a collection of clods that you can just kick around and manipulate. But it isn't that way. And it's, but it's got us in this, the situation that we're in now. We're, we're destroying the entire planet with Western technology. Regaining our feeling sense is the primary act of disobedience that all of us can do. Contemplation is what allows us to extract its deeper nature to begin to work with it consciously and then begin to decide what to do about those meanings that we've been exposed to. But only if we reclaim the response of the heart to what's presented to the senses. That's our job now. If we want to change the world, that's the first thing. I'm sitting on the ground and I open the session and I look up and we were in this green dome of plants and there was this circle of spirits. And I looked up and everybody cheered. And they were cheering because I got it. And I realized in that moment that the spirits are there and desperate to talk to us as much as we are there for them, or we are desperate to talk to them. They want to work in cooperation with us. And as ecstatic as I was, they were even more ecstatic. We are looking into the depths of our own flesh. I mean, this is our body. You want to clear cut another forest? That's my body. It's your body too. What are you doing? More plastic into these ocean currents? This is our blood. So to identify with our body is the simplest way to begin to feel for this earth and to feel into the earth because it is our larger body. We've put too many stresses on the planet. We've geared too many machines, uh, too many mega machines that are interlocking. We've, we've put the entire planet on the inside of a machine. The whole thing now is surrounded by machines. It's, it's, it's on the inside of human technologies. We have exceeded the carrying capacity of the Earth already. Once that happens, there is no way out. There is no soft landing possible. Nature doesn't judge. I get the sense from what I've learned from them, from, from the nature spirits, and the sense that I get when I think about these types of things is that they don't judge. It's your planet. It's your home. You're here to do as you will. But there are consequences. I think Western civilization is on its way out. I think it will be gone in a couple of centuries. It can't stand the, kind, the kinds of stresses that it's based on. It's, it's, it's not a sustainable model. Bangladesh and low-lying places like New Orleans and New York and the Netherlands, those are all the first places that are going to drown. And they're going to put a lot of population pressures on the other cities. So we're going to see like something like a billion people on the move, a billion people who are not on the inside of a city somewhere, like, like we are. They're, they're, they're going to be homeless people looking for someone to take them in. And those, those numbers are going to increase. And eventually we're going to be forced to move into a post-urban mode. Cataclysms are the motor of evolution. Uh, new species can spread into niches that abruptly open up. Um, and 
So species then evolve new sets of possibilities, traits, styles, uh, senses. I love how these guys, scientists go, you know, human beings are the smartest, most intelligent organisms on the planet. I'm like, how many people have you met? Do you ever read the news? Have you ever read history? And that's what you're saying? If this is intelligence, we're in trouble. The universe is in trouble. What nature has told me is that no matter what we do, they're going to be here. Even if we destroy the planet with nuclear power, nature's going to be here. We may not be here, but some aspect of us will be here because this is all us. The teaching for a lot of us is that dance is prayer. So when you're in that sacred space, when you go into that dance circle, it becomes a prayer. Every step that you take becomes a prayer. There's a whole spectrum of emotion I have about it because in this country it was illegal for Native people to have powwows for a long time. My grandparents couldn't do that. And I think those ancestors must be so pleased to have the people gathering together and in that space dancing. We have had the Garden of Eden here. We have this incredible, beautiful, miraculous, breathtaking world. And we've taken a path of technology that just to me every day seems like it's moving us farther and farther and farther away from the origins of who we are. There is magic around us all the time. There are miracles around us all the time. Mm -hmm.